Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to show you guys how to install and set up the Supreme Odroid beta testers image by this guy here. I can't pronounce his name, sorry. I'll also leave a link to his YouTube channel in the description. As you guys might already know, he's uh, pretty well known for doing some really good Raspberry Pi uh, images. And now he's switched over to Odroid. What's really great is that it's using a track mode, so we're not stuck with emulation station. Uh, no offense to emulation station, I just like a track mode a little bit better. All right, first things first, download the uh, image. You're not going to have a link to it because this is for beta testers only. Go ahead and extract it. And then make sure you you have this here, the controller mapping Supreme Odroid PNG file, because you're going to need this after we do the installation or the burning of the image. So um, first things first, most people say use SD card formatter to clear out what previous images you had on your SD card. Well, um, I found that if I have an SD card with any kind of Linux partition on it, as soon as I put it in, SD card formatter just automatically crashes. And it won't come back up until I let go, I well extract the uh, SD card from the system. So what I do is I just use mini tool partition wizard. It's free. I'll leave a link to the download in the description. Go ahead and put it in your SD card. It'll refresh. Make sure it's your SD card and then delete whatever partitions are there. It'll automatically, uh, I'm sorry, after you delete all your partitions, you're going to want to right click and say create. And then it's going to automatically select NTFS or FAT32 depending on the size of your card. Just accept the defaults. Then click apply. This is your last chance to uh, Make sure that it is the right drive. And you're all set. If you want to, you can use SD card formatter um, again, and it'll work. But you don't need to, uh, because what we just did there is good enough for Etcher or a Win32 disk imager to write to. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Etcher. I'm going to select the Supreme Odroid image. Make sure you have your SD card selected. And then flash it. Once that's done, you're going to go ahead and plug it in to your Odroid and boot. After your Odroid has rebooted and resized the memory card, you're going to want to set up your controller to work inside of a track mode. So plug in a keyboard if you don't already have one plugged in, and press tab, and then go up to controls. Select the control you want to change by pressing enter on the keyboard, and then go to add input, press enter, and press the button. You can do that for everything you want to set up. And then when you're done with that, you can just press backspace or whatever new controller configuration you set up to get to the main menu and then go into settings. And then you're going to want to go to a track setup and options. It's going to ask you for a password. The password's Odroid. You're going to go down to Set Dreamcast Player 1 Controller. You're going to select the number of the joystick that you're using, or want to map, and that's number 3. It'll ask you if you want to map a button to the emulator. It's already highlighted um, yes, 
as you can see by the capital Y. So I just press enter and then press the button I want. You're going to do that for every button that is on your controller. Uh, there is no C or D button. I don't know why it asks for this, so I just press N. There's no Z button either. I don't have a second D-pad. All right, once that's done, go ahead and select exit. After you set up your Dreamcast pad, you're going to want to go to configure Ant Micro Joy Pop Mapper. I think it's supposed to be a Joy Pad Mapper, um, but just go ahead and launch it. You're going to want to make sure you have a mouse plugged in. If you don't, you're going to have to use keyboard shortcuts to get to the actual application. You're going to see this screen. It's just blank. Um, if you have a mouse plugged in and you move it, you'll see you have a mouse cursor. So you're not locked up. What you need to do is you need to go to the bottom right hand corner to reveal the taskbar and click on the joypad. This is where that PNG file that was extracted earlier comes in handy. What you want to do is you want to pull it up and match everything accordingly. I'm going to press a key on my joystick and if you notice it highlights it. So what you do is you click on whatever you want to map which is going to be all these in this case and you're going to map it according to the diagram. So according to the diagram, my D-pad needs to be the arrow keys. All right, so it automatically filled it in. All right, so the next button I'm going to map is going to be A. And that's button 3 on my controller, so I click on button 3. And then according to the diagram, that should be backspace. All right, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward and map all these. Uh, once I do that, I'm going to save it. And you need to make sure you save it just as it is written on the actual diagram. I th believe it is p1.gamecontroller.amgp. Once everything is mapped and saved, go ahead and click on the little X and it'll go back into a track mode. All right, after you have your controller set up, uh, you're pretty much ready to go. You can just start copying over ROMs. You can do it via SSH. There's no share set up right now. Um, you can use SFTP. It's the easiest way to do it. Um, you might want to add a hard drive, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Just go back into the track setup and options. And then launch it. And it's going to ask you for a password again. It's just Odroid. And you're going to go down to enabling hard drive for ROMs. Uh, make note of what it says afterwards. The name of the hard drive has to be that. I can't pronounce it, um, but I'll try. It's uh, Reg Alad. Uh, make sure it's that, and make sure it's NTFS with a ROMs folder in the root. Once it's there, just press Enter, and it'll copy a whole bunch of stuff over and set everything up for you and reboot the system. Don't worry, it's not going to format your drive, so you're not going to lose anything, and the drive will still work 
in recall box, but you just might have to re-add it if the uh, since the volume name changed. Okay, now the uh, utility is done setting up our hard drive. So hopefully we have some games in here. Let's find out. And it appears we do. So let's go ahead and just launch one of these games real quick. Make sure it works. And it does. And it's got the nice bezels. And as you can see, the logo is playing on the case. And that's really cool. And the joystick seems to be working. If you guys haven't played this game, play it. Okay, and to exit a game, you just uh, select and start, which is basically just all F4, if you remember from the joypad mapper. And the final thing I'm going to show you guys is the utility to overclock. Go back into settings and go to C CPU control utility and launch it. You're going to want the mouse plugged in on this one again. It's going to ask you for a password. You're going to type Odroid. You're going to select performance and then select OK. You're going to select frequency 1400, select OK. You're going to select frequency 1400 again and select OK. And then performance again and select OK. This time you're going to select 2000 for a frequency of minimum frequency and max 2000. And it's going to exit. Now you're all set up and ready to test everything you could possibly want.